Hey TG, ready for story time? I hope so. Now a little bit of backstory before I make you fall head first into this dark crevice. October of last year, I had watched all of the Godzilla movies in a marathon in preparation of watching a pirated copy of Shin Godzilla, since it only showed in selected theatres, and I fell in love with it. At the time, I was also planning to run a D&D campaign, but I didn't know what on. So using a bit of homebrew and the airship pirate system, I made my own game around the middle of November. I DM'd the following campaigns. The first campaign was about five of my players, as Japanese biologists in the government as weird things have been going on with the environment. Whale corpses are washing up on the beaches and radiation is spreading through the sea in small pockets before disappearing. This fucked up the ecosystem around Japan quite a bit, so initially the campaign was really kind of boring. Several sessions in, I would have just gotten them to go and see what the weird shit is happening and to see their reasoning for it. One player even voiced her concerns about the game, but I told her there was nothing to worry about and I was trying something new. None of them knew about the second game I was running. I told one of my friends about the campaign I was planning today. You see, I was just going to have Godzilla be an NPC controlled by me. But after a long discussion, my friend convinced me to let him play in the campaign as Godzilla. Now before I go even further into the story, here was the system I set up. The sessions would work as turns and cents. One session we would spend with the humans as they try and predict where Godzilla would pop up. They would also have to deal with the Japanese politics along with international politics as well. Deploying the defence force and researching new ways to deal with Godzilla were also part of the game as well as you'll soon see. The next turn however was a little bit different. Godzilla's turn in the beginning of the campaign was a little bit strange. The sessions would mostly go with my friend, who I will be calling Frank, going around the ocean collecting new energy and mutating. Frank would also have to stay under the radar of the Japanese slash world governments. I would also like to point out that my human team didn't know of Frank in the other game. Made Godzilla a much more formidable foe in the end. Now, for about three sessions I had my human players doing pretty basic work. They would go to a location, take sample studies, and that was it really. Their theory was that the Fukushima radiation spill was really fucking things up in the ocean. And while they couldn't explain the disappearing pockets of radiation, they could explain the other happenings. Or so they thought, because while I had them fucking around with dead animal corpses, Frank was going on a fucking rampage. He was attacking nuclear subs like a fucking madman, stealing the precious cargo within a very short amount of time. He managed to rack up so much MP, mutation points. I believe he was ready for the reveal, and how right he fucking was. He starts by mutating into Godzilla's first form, seen in the movies and moves into Tokyo Bay. Water begins boiling and the red substance is seen spreading throughout the water. My human team begins getting ready for what they think is just another job. The Japanese government starts evacuating citizens from the area due to reports of volcanic activity. My humans get to the scene in only an hour and set up a small base to see what the fuck is going on. Soon reports and rumours of a gigantic creature make their way to base and the team is freaking the fuck out. Then a massive tail sprouts out of the water and begins waving around. They all shit their collective pants and pack the fuck out of there before seeing Frank start to move into the water canals. Once they get back to HQ, they are immediately bombarded with questions by not only high-ranking officials, but the Prime Minister himself. They start trying to form a plan as Frank finally makes his way on land. At this point he is already evolved into Kamata-kun and is barreling down the streets as fast as his legs will carry him. The local police try to stop him with various blockades and weaponry, but he makes all of his rolls and tells them all to fuck off with a headbutt to everything. It's only when tanks begin to show up does Frank get serious. He charges a tank column at full speed, taking shots as he does so. While Frank is throwing tanks around like chew toys, the humans are trying to mount a full scale offensive with helicopters in the works. The team is analysing everything about Frank as he fights the tanks. Everyone is very hopeful, as the tanks are beginning to do a number on Frank since he's just a wee babe. It still isn't until a helicopter arrives does Frank get spooked and evolves into Shinagangwankun. <laughs> Put that in. <laughs> The team shits their collective pants again, and the Prime Minister allows all forms of weapons to be used against Frank. And to make matters worse, Frank is running out of steam, and needs to get the fuck out of there. He does manage to escape, albeit heavily injured. After Frank disappeared under the water, the team is left with some breathing room to operate. The leader of the team, let's call her Anne, is ordered to talk with the Prime Minister and barely manages to keep her job. The rest of the gang heads out to collect samples of Frank for analysis, before discovering everywhere he went is irradiated as fuck. Frank 
is fucking pissed. All he did was go on the land to see new shit, but all these assholes begin attacking him. So in retaliation, he eats a nuclear power plant and sinks a shit ton of fishing ships, building up even more MP. At this point, the US and Russia is involved, and along with the team set up a base of operations at the central government buildings, and start getting to work theorising about what the fuck Frank is, until after a little hinting, they figure out he's radioactive and uses nuclear fission to function. Over the course of two sessions, they have planned and set up military forces at Tokyo Bay and other places of interest where they believe Frank will surface again. They also get a name to this threat, Godzilla. Frank makes several more nuclear subs go missing and upgrades his current form. He can now shoot small plumes of smoke from his mouth. Neat. He begins moving back into Tokyo Bay. The team's predictions were accurate and Frank comes back ashore in Tokyo Bay and with a fucking vengeance. The second he gets on land, he charges into a building filled with infantry and munitions reducing it to a pile of rubble. Frank doesn't even get slowed down as he begins slaughtering civilians by the hundreds as they try and evacuate. You can imagine the horror when you're woken up in the middle of the night to see a giant monster rampaging through the streets, killing people by the dozen every time it moves. Anne and the Prime Minister try and keep the peace by lying to the public that they have a way to defeat Godzilla, but the public isn't buying it as Frank continues his path of destruction towards Tokyo. The Defence Force is doing its best to try and halt Frank's path, but he seems to be unstoppable until the artillery start to fire. Now Frank was making his ridiculously evil wind save rolls, but artillery was strong, really strong, and Frank was getting his ass pointed every which way. Infantry is advancing with a prototype rocket launcher made just to kill him. Red then fills the air as Frank begins to glow. His jaw unhinges and plumes of smoke bellow forth, covering the battlefield with an irradiated smoke and in the dust the figure of Frank begins getting larger and larger. The evacuation of Tokyo is going really goddamn poorly due to panic and looting taking place pretty much everywhere. The police are trying to stop what they can, but with all the chaos they are hopelessly fucked. Anne and friends are starting to pack up as they last saw Frank he was still heading towards Tokyo. The dust doesn't even have time to settle as a gigantic foot crashes into the ground below. Frank had now involved into his fourth form. Kamakura-san. Helicopters, tanks, artillery and bombers are now focusing all their fire on Frank as he moves slowly into Tokyo, crashing into several buildings. America is moving their asses into gear and deploying bombers. Russia is doing the same. Frank, with his newfound powers, unhinges his jaw again and it splits apart. An absolutely gigantic plume of smoke bellows out from his mouth and into the streets on Tokyo. Many civilians are caught in the plume, including two of the team. Then Frank turns purple, and this plume turns into a torrent of fire that lights all the remaining smoke alight. Frank rolled so many fucking successes, I tallied the damages to be a little more than half of Tokyo, but the carnage didn't stop there. As the bombers closed in, the fire coming out of Frank's mouth became smaller and smaller until it became a purple beam of death. Many more buildings were simply cut in half by a beam, and the city is beginning to look more like a pile of rubble than the city. Two of the team die in the fire, and another dies by a skyscraper falling them. Only Anne and the computer guy is left. The Russian bombers got over to the scene first, and started shelling Frank with everything they've got. This, of course, only served to anger Frank, and he began shooting his beam into the sky in an attempt to destroy the bombers. It wasn't until the American bombers got to the scene did Frank realise he was fucked beyond belief. The American bombers did miss a few first drops. But the next round of bombs caught Frank in his meaty thighs, crippling him. Frank's regain rolls were horrible, only managed to heal a little at a time as the bombers kept pounding him into the dirt. Meanwhile, Anne is meeting up with the ground forces in an attempt to collect regrowing samples for study. The only problem is that the bombers aren't calling off the attack, and the surrounding area is a fucking death zone. Computer guy got fucked out of the city. Aside from getting shelled to absolute hell, Frank has almost no nuclear power left in him. As atomic breath is expensive as shit, he has Godzilla try and thrash around, but he finds that he can't move. I tell him to make one more heel check. 13. Fucking success. Fucking what? 
he manages to stand back up and he begins charging further into the city at a snail's pace. Luckily for him, however, the bombers go back to refill ammunition. Ground forces and Anne begin moving in as the bombers make their way back to HQ. Their advance doesn't last long, as they see a very wounded Frank practically stumbling their way. Tanks are crushed underfoot and Frank's blood is getting on everything. Many soldiers die from a cascade of liquid falling on them and the rest of the infantry move in to collect more samples, except for Anne. Tanks are ordered to fire on Frank and after a few saving rolls he tumbles back down to the ground again. Shells are actually penetrating him because of the bomber winds. As Frank continues getting ass blasted, Anne walks into no man's land causing the tanks to stop firing. Anne comes face to face with the dying Frank and just goes fucking off on him. She is literally screaming at fucking God on earth as it takes his last breath. That isn't the end though. She climbs on some rubble and starts kicking Frank. This halts the defense force long enough that after a good in-game half hour of kicking Frank has healed a lot, his mouth opens one final time and it goes from plume to fire to beam in an instant. He gets back on his feet and obliterates the tank before turning back to Anne. Anne is crying and is still screaming at Frank who is going into a coma mode after expending too much energy. His legs give out and Frank crashes back down to the ground and crushes Anne. I decided to end the campaign there as the only guy still alive got fucked out of there. Frank joined us for the last session and I revealed that I was doing a campaign with him. They were amused. The end. So yeah, um, I actually did this story a while back, so I did, uh, about maybe a year and a half ago, but not many people saw it, and I thought now's a better time than ever to go back and redo it, just because I love this story, I would love to play a campaign like this, everything about it is perfect, I love the idea of, you know, unusual settings, like, you know, I love the idea of playing, like, you know, a tabletop game set in Zillow Universe, I love the idea of having two separate campaigns going at the same time and they don't really know of each other maybe you could even mix it in like you know maybe have some guy play the big bad evil guy and you know the other players do whatever but they have to stay secret from each other you know what i mean you have to make sure that they don't know of each other would be very difficult maybe that could only work as a one shot i think but i love it i really enjoy it um if you guys ever try anything like this let me know because I just want to know more about this type of shit because I thought it was really cool. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm getting myself hyped just thinking about it. I've got all these ideas I would love to do. You know, like, instead of Godzilla, you could do, like, 1950s monster movies or, you know, make it cheesy, do whatever. I think it would be so much fun. I would really like to do this. But, look, um, before I start going on and on, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, as you guys, well, as most of you guys know, the text speech is completely gone because it's against YouTube's terms of service. Um, it's another week away before I can apply for advertisements again on this channel, so hopefully we get all seen to. And, look, as always, guys, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.